this video we're going to look at um, planning the basics of planning earthworks we're just going to look at an overview of it we're not going to go into too much detail um, so earthworks design process you, you will have the horizontal and vertical alignments designed you'll have a longitudinal section and cross sections at each point um, then you need to calculate the the areas and come up with the cut and fill volumes um, once you have the cut and fill volumes then you can um, distribute it produce a mass hall diagram and from the mass hall diagram you can start doing the earthworks planning you can figure out the sequence uh, where the saw is going to go so that the trick with the earthworks planning is moving the soil in the most efficient way making sure that the uh, resources you're using are the most efficient for um, the the haul that you're, you're requiring them to do and making sure that you're not moving soil further than it needs to so as mentioned, uh, the first thing is to sort of figure out the quantities, um, where the where the soil is, where the cut is, where the fill is, um, how much material needs to be shifted. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, one thing that needs to be considered is that when a material is excavated and loaded onto a truck, it occupies more volume. It is less dense and occupies more volume than it did in situ. And the reason for that is obviously there's there's more soil voids there each time the excavator takes a chunk out there's air spaces between each um, each part of the excavation and then when it gets back into uh, when you lay it back down again into a fill um, sometimes you compact it to a much higher density than what it was originally so therefore one cubic meter of clay soil may compact down to 0.9 cubic meters um, in fill um, sand on the other hand it may be that you can't compact it down to its natural um, it, its original um, natural density so one cubic meter may result in 1.1 cubic meters of fill so one cubic meter of cut 1.1 cubic meters of fill but also in the trucks uh, two cubic meters of sand so if you were calculating um, how many trucks you need if you're just using this uh, one cubic meter you would actually um, be severely wrong because you need um, twice twice as many truck loads um, to be able to carry it there. So those are the sort of things you're going to be thinking about when you're figuring out your volumes, when you're figuring out how many trucks you need, uh, when you're figuring out how much cut you need for a certain fill volume. And here's the bulking and shrinking factors. Um, it does vary quite a bit and you probably need to do it in the lab to make sure that you've got the bulking uh, and shrinkage factors um, right so the bulking factors are when you dig it out of the ground and put it into a truck how much does it bulk up by shrinkage factors are the difference between cut and fill so the mass haul diagram is <coughs> so the mass haul diagram is a graphical representation of where all the soil is and where it all needs to go. Uh, it gives you the distance between the between the different um, areas and from that you can figure out the haul distance. You can figure out what bit of plant would be appropriate for that. Uh, waste or spoil is material that must be exported from site. Sometimes you have a surplus of, of material and it needs to be trucked off site so that's the waste or spoil. Sometimes you don't have enough for the fill material that you need and you need to bring some in so it's the borrow it's called burrow so the mass hall diagram you would have learnt this in um, soil and structural drawing you've got the distance there you've got your cut volume fill volume and then the mass hall diagram is really just the distance versus the cumulative volume so in this case here we've got 330 um, cubic meters of cut in this section from 0 to 20 there's 10 cubic meters of fill therefore the cumulative volume is 320 and so on so here's what a mass hall diagram looks like there's the long section at the top there and there's the mass hall diagram so you can see we're doing cut 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 so this whole area here from A to B needs to be cut so it's increasing and then cumulative um, volume starts to go down as we're starting to get into fill so it's dropping 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 um, between 0 and C 
we have balance cut to fill. So going from there to there, it's balance cut to fill. Remember, when you're calculating those fill volumes, you have to apply bulking factors and shrinkage factors as well. Sorry, the shrinkage factor when you're calculating the fill volumes. But you can see that there's a little bit more fill, so it keeps on going down and down and down. So now we've got um, an excess of, um, of fill, um, and then we've got a little bit of cut there. So you can see from that we can say, okay, well we need to haul the material from there to there and haul material from there to there. And you can also calculate the average distances that are required and also the volumes from here as well. So from that you know how much you need to move, you need to know how far you need to move it, and then you can make the appropriate selection for uh, what sort of plant you're going to use. Uh, and here is an indica indication of the most economical haul distances. So dump trucks with excavators usually sort of kick in between 600 and 3 kilometers. Uh, scrapers are in that area 500 to 2 kilometers. Elevating scrapers up to about a kilometer. Towed scrapers, remember they're being towed by bulldozers so they're very slow, up to about 300 meters and a bulldozer by itself up to about 100 meters. Now these are just indicative. All things being equal, if you had the choice of anything then you'd probably go with these. But usually you are constrained by what is actually available to you. So you have to work with what you've got. It may be that you don't have any scrapers available to you and you're sort of hauling maybe a thousand meter, a thousand meter call distance, but all that's available to you is dump trucks and they'll do fine. So this is all things being equal, all things being perfect. Often doesn't happen like that, it's whatever is available to you but it does give you a pretty good idea of the relative uh, efficiencies of the different types of plant. So here's the plant selection. So you've got your um, long section there. There's your haul diagram. And so we're saying, well, there's a haul needs to be from there to there. So material needs to come from here and go into there. And we're saying we need an elevating scraper or excavator and trucks because it's uh, about 500 meter haul distance. The, getting the material from there into there, we could probably just get by with a bulldozer for that short one there and then a bulldozer with a towed scraper for that shorter one there. So you can see that the mass haul diagram allows us to very quickly determine what um, what plant would be suitable for what hauls. So we've got a short haul there for the bulldozer, um, there's a longer haul there which will be done with the excavator and trucks or with the elevating scrapers. So that allows us to plan what 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 plant is doing what what sections of the work. The other thing you need to figure out is how long it's going to take you. Um, we're not going to cover this in too much detail, but build uh, productivity curves. Uh, the suppliers will normally provide productivity curves which tell you um, how much um, material the the their, their product can produce. So this one here is for a bulldozer. You can see a D6 there. So a D6 um, hauling an average of about 50 meters is going to be able to do, to do 200 cu uh, cubic meters per hour. So if you've got a thousand cubic meters to shift and you've got a D6 bulldozer and you've got to shift at 50 meters then you say well it's going to take me I'm going to do 200 cubic meters an hour it's going to take me about five hours. So from that you can very quickly get an estimate of how long each bit of plant is going to take to do a particular um, haul um, and so that's quite a useful thing to be able to do as well.